Podcasts are in crisis. You're going to want to stay tuned to our show to find out why as we examine recent layoffs at companies like SiriusXM. Then, our main case for the episode has to do with a defendant and a little squabble over some Taylor Swift concert tickets. They're hard to get. Stay tuned for our verdicts. What you are listening to is real. The parties involved are not cool. They are actual geeks with a case pending in the court of public opinion. The party's case has been dismissed, and the dispute will be settled here on our podcast. There will be no lawyers. There will be no witness testimony. The judge's decisions are final. Hello, I'm Judge Ivan. I'm Judge Jonathan, and this is Geeks on Trial. Today's case, Bad Blood. Welcome to Geeks on Trial. This is the podcast where we settle petty disputes between actual geeks over movies, video games, board games, and more. If you'd like to submit your own geeky case for a future episode, you can email us at geeksontrial at gmail.com. You can also support the show over at patreon.com slash geeksontrial for just five bucks a month, where you can get early access to both our audio and video episodes, plus our bonus show, Geeks on Trial Sidebar. Another sidebar episode went up just uh, this past Friday, which was about, uh, we answered the question of, what was it again? What was our uh, favorite, uh, oh, if we wanted to bring a game show back from the dead, what game show would we want to bring back from the dead? And boy, if you want to hear about some vintage Nickelodeon game shows and, and 70s game shows, that's the place to do it. It gets really that's very hot right now talking about old Nickelodeon shows. True. That's a big topic True. right now. So it, for different reasons. And yeah, it's a 16 minute episode, I think. So uh, head on over there and it's Yeah, it's, it's a big one. You know, it's a big chunky one. It's a You're going to want to get in on it. Chunky one. It's got that chunky peanut got butter. Got that mm-hmm. Well, we'll see you Before next we get week. To today's oh. case. <laughs> <laughs> you brought a subject to our attention, mm-hmm. uh, which which uh, kind of has to do with the audio podcast radio industry at large. There's been layoffs like everywhere in the last right. year or two. I've seen this a ton in video games, but I think it's kind of been uh, an epidemic across a lot of different industries in the U.S., of people just firing folks left and right, mm-hmm. laying off massive portions of their companies, tech companies, uh, maybe is like where we're really seeing this the most. And uh, you saw this coming out of Sirius as well. The uh, What do they do again? So the Radio? Sirius XM company, which used to be the Sirius company and the XM company, which combined into one company to make a giant satellite radio company. I didn't know that. Now also makes podcasts, or really they just kind of... Um, they absorbed smaller podcast companies, I believe, um, Headgum? Smartless. That I don't know about Headgum, but I know they did Smartless. They, they, they did buy things. whatever the one Scott Ackerman over at Comedy Bang Bang used to own. I forgot which one that was. but That's the, where we thought they were saying that's Earwolf. That's Earwolf. So, yeah, because <laughs> they bought Earwolf and then they fired everyone from Earwolf. So it's that kind of thing where it's like, oh, this massive corporation is going to buy your smaller corporation and then, pardon my French, um, fuck you over. As big corporations do. Now, I don't want to say too much because if they want to buy us someday, they can. (laughs) We will take any amount. (laughs) But what it seems like is a lot of these tech companies are were, were booming and trying to project during the COVID era. And, you know, people were using more tech, doing more podcasting and and podcasts have boomed. They have they've had they've gone boom. And there's everyone has a podcast, including these two guys right here. That's uh, me and you, and you and me. And they, you know, podcasts are so happy together. Cheap to make, they're they're easy to make, but they're not easy to get out on the market. So it's it's you know you can you can post a podcast anywhere, but for people to see it, you need a name behind it. You need a Sirius XM. You need um you need a Headgum or or somebody like that Starburns, who was another company that was bought out by somebody else spotify right which i think is technically who we put out on but you know um kind of, yeah so you know you needed a big name company to do this but now all these big name companies no longer have money because podcasts don't make money guys surprise surprise so so you know <laughs> remember our patreon <laughs> right patreon.com slash geeks on trial give us your money please we need money so yeah so yeah so it makes sense that a radio company like a Sirius xm or an iheart media or any of these massive conglomerates that went around and bought local radio stations would buy podcasts and podcast companies because they already have the infrastructure for audio 
And a lot of these companies made their radio shows, like, you know, regular Monday through Friday radio shows, into podcasts. Um, one of the biggest people to do this was NPR. Mm-hmm. And, you know, NPR is their own organization. I don't know who owns National Public Radio. But, you know, uh, so podcasts right now. I, I own part of it. Are Really? Are you the national, the public, or the radio? I think if you get a tote bag, that means you own part <laughs> right? of it. <laughs> also, I've never, I've never donated or gotten a tote bag. That's a lie. <laughs> the only tote bag I've ever gotten from one of those companies is like the New Yorker. Like I signed up for like a six month thing of New Yorker, and they're like, "Here's a tote bag." That's fun. Yeah. So yeah, so SiriusXM and, and a lot of these podcast companies are failing to notice that you know a free venture like a podcast that doesn't really need money to sustain isn't really making money. You know, like for us, for for making a podcast. The initial cost was buying the microphones, the cameras, the audio mixers, and maybe a website or somewhere to host it. But after that, it's relatively free as part of money. It takes a lot of time, which time equals money. But, you know, it, it, it takes time. It doesn't take a lot of money to make these shows. But I could see the major issue with these is a lot of these podcasts where – Podcasts are. You forgot the wardrobe. Oh, true. Yeah, robes uh, and gavels. Props and wardrobe. The gavel yeah. budget. <laughs> but a lot of these. Don't yeah. forget back in the day when we even started our original podcast X amount of years ago, it was nerds. It was nerds and people who were already in the radio industry making podcasts. Now it's starting to be celebrities and and big name comedians and talk show hosts like Conan, for example, who expect a higher paycheck than just like you know us sustaining ourselves via a few ads or a few, you know, Patreon uh, subscribers here and there where, you know, like a, a big podcast, one that I listen to and one that's big for a lot of people to join podcasts is the office ladies. Oh, and um, <laughs> stop mentioning the office ladies. People are going to go listen to that instead of us. Yeah, they're almost over. They're on season nine already. So like, you know, they are so much content. They are big names, big ish names, that are, you know, that need to get paid bigger money, quote unquote. So that's why I think a lot of these companies are like, we need to fire people to, you know, give Conan his paycheck. I know you've, you've said a, a lot of things. It's, there's a lot here to for me to chew on. But like, what do you th- like? Because, you know, like I was saying, podcasts were and still are the free venture to do things like it, it doesn't really cost a lot to host a podcast where it's like for YouTube video bit rates are a lot higher. It's more space where a podcast is normally like one of our shows is well under a gigabyte. Yeah. Well, it's very, I think it's YouTube and podcasts have had a somewhat similar trajectory Mm -hmm. in that there has been kind of a democratization of that style of media with YouTube, it was video with podcasts, it's audio. And now with podcasts, it's also video, <laughs> which <laughs> is another that's a whole other, yeah. that's a separate, that's a separate issue. I think the big difference is what you said is correct. Podcasts seem to be in the way of celebrities doing it, or even it doesn't have to be a big, it doesn't have to be a Conan, right. but like, I think a lot of actors and, and standups have, looked around and realized, especially if you are in the movie or TV industry, you don't usually have a steady nine to five job or something like that. So they realized like, Hey, why shouldn't I, I'm just sitting around all this time. I see some of these podcasts have Patreons, get ads are successful. It also just promotes your your brand and your shows you're doing or whatever. So it's like, it makes perfect sense. And you know, my, my living is made in being entertaining. Right. Why shouldn't I be entertaining on a podcast every week? And especially like stand ups uh, and any just comedian. Like, it's usually, and I don't mean to like poo poo anybody, but it's usually like B level and lower comedians. Yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. You know, I mean, even, even Smartless, which is apparently like the most popular podcast on the planet. Right. Uh, don't get me like Jason Bateman is, you know, he's a, he's a, Star, he's in big movies and and very popular TV shows, but he's still not like, you know, Adam Sandler's not doing a podcast, right? You know what I mean, <laughs> like there is a certain right. <laughs> you do have, you can't be, I mean, not that you know like who the fuck am I to say <laughs> Jason Bateman's right? Not a but he's a big name, star, but he's but... <laughs> not like the famous person in the zeitgeist right now. He's not you know, 
comedy fans will will know him, but right. I feel like I feel like a mainstream person might be like, oh yeah, Arrested Development guy or whatever. Like they might not know his name right. necessarily, or maybe they do because that podcast is extremely popular. I just never listened to it. But anyway, but then and then for YouTube, I feel like it's similar, except instead of um, it's not I, at least from what I see, mm-hmm. it's not as much celebrities as it is just the equipment and the and the pr- presentation being more expensive right. and elaborate. And in, but in both cases, what the end result is, is that where it used to be a- any, any schmuck on the street can like put together a little thing and have fun with it. Right. Now it feels like to compete, you have to either be a name or you got to be really top notch, right. top of the line, audio video, do something cool with it. We are uh, taking the brave route of doing neither. Right. That's that's our approach. To We're it. just selling this on our faces. So if you guys don't, you know, if you don't know what our faces look like, go hit up the uh, the YouTube channel. And I, it it does also does seem like Spotify in particular, maybe Sirius as well. I think Amazon has started to do Amazon Music has started to host podcasts too. I feel like some of these companies have gotten in and been like, oh man. We looked around at podcasts and they're really big. We got to like go all in on podcasts now. And it's almost like, ah, you're like seven years too late. Right. <laughs> and this is right when it's maybe that bubble is, I don't know if it's the bubble is the right term, but right. it's start, It's getting harder and harder to compete. And I have heard anecdotally from podcasts that I listen to that it's been, it's gotten harder in recent years to get sponsors yeah. and to get people to, to get companies because I think companies have just started to see fewer and fewer returns on their well, giving ads to these shows. If you think about it, it's like with radio and with radio, there's no way to track it. Like, yeah, we can give you an ad where it's like, hey, go to caspermattresses.com slash geeks on trial. But that's the only way we'll know if anybody can track it. Like, I'm pretty sure even with over-the-air radio, like regular old-school radio, you can't tell who's listening. You just kind of have to, like, guess and see who calls in yeah. and stuff like that. Or it's the same thing with podcasts, which is why, like, even us, for example, we have both an audio and video because we can see really in real time who's watching the video. Where our audio numbers, it's kind of a little delayed. It depends on who's listening on what platform. And the other weird thing is podcasts have been around since 2005, roughly. Uh, Leo Laporte uh, over there at Twitch started basically when uh, he left whatever cable network he was on and started one of the first podcasts. I think it was like him, Marin and MTV too. And some, yep. And some, he was on Noggin actually. And some other people started in around 2005 podcast technologically really haven't advanced much because still like when we like just using this show, for example, when we were setting up this podcast, you still have to individually go in and get an RSS feed for iTunes. You have to go in and get an RSS feed for Google. Like every platform that we are found on, you have to go in either by hands, which was a few years ago, or use a website like a Spotify or whatever to, you know, dust all these other locations for us. And, you know, it it is so weird that, like, you see somebody like YouTube or TikTok, Instagram or whatever, make these leaps and bounds technologically, good or bad, but podcasting is still, like, your grandfather's media. It's still, like, it's still, like, a talk (laughs) radio thing. It's still kind of old school. We're still using giant, chunky mics, big head. Like, it's still, like, it, it... the audio format hasn't changed. And I still think like people like Sirius XM and radios, radio stations aren't doing well because of places like Pandora, YouTube music, places like that. So they are trying to find the new hotness, which was oddly an old hotness podcasting to throw their money into because they're like, Oh, people are flocking to podcast, which they were, you know, over the last, what, three years, or since COVID, basically, when people couldn't go to a, a movie studio or a radio studio, people were in their closets making podcasts. And everyone had one. Every stand-up comedian. People who haven't been on TV in, like, 20 years are like, hey, I could do a podcast. You know, like, one of the big ones I listened to for a while, which was poor quality, they, they did it over a real phone for a while, was the Gilbert Godfrey Amazing Colossal Podcast. 
which was also taken over by Sirius XM at some point. Mm. So it's just wild yeah. that this giant, and it's, it's interesting to see that this giant venture that everyone, like podcasts are now a household name, is starting to dip. Because there's like it, there's not a lot to go on in the audio medium. Like it, it's very interesting to see it take a dive. Yeah, it's weird. and clearly the I feel like the video podcast has been only in like the last year right. has that really been a big thing. Uh, although it's funny when you because you know you brought up Leo Laporte and it's they had video podcasts back in the very beginning. Yeah, I think like the first uh, two years they didn't do video and then it was like oh we can just they were like one of the first people to live stream like they were doing like justin tv or whatever the, whatever twitch used to be before it was twitch yeah and they were just live streaming their podcasts 24 hours a day i mean revision three which was their yep. video webs that those i don't i don't know if they actually called them podcasts at the time or if there was a podcast version of it but they were essentially video podcasts yeah. And it's, it is kind of funny that there were, then there was like 20 years when we didn't do that. And then everyone was like, maybe we should do that. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Which I wonder uh, why they did. I guess to get a second ad revenue in or people were like, hey, I want to see your faces. I think it's for them. It was still like um, podcasts were still so new that it made more sense to be like we're coming from the world of TV. Right. This makes more sense to us. Like it, the idea of putting an audio file on your iPod was still very right. Was not normal. <laughs> right, and back in the day, now you had you to, to do that. you had to physically download and drag <laughs> yeah. it over. And it's just so weird watching this come full circle because, like, sure, we aren't big in the industry, but like you and I have done, we're pretty big. We've done YouTube stuff. I've worked in you know small TV stations. I've we, you know you've done. We've both done college radio. Like it's so weird. To see these, all the hits. <laughs> to see these kind of mush together now, and it's like it sounds sad when you actually say it all out loud it is. like that. Yeah. So that's fine. Yeah, but um, you know, it is. It's so weird that it's like these are coming full circle, and it's like now everyone's combining them, because like podcasts were one thing, YouTube was another thing, and that was it. And now it's like we're kind of mushing everything together, and it's like podcasts and YouTube versus TikTok. Well, it's the same thing we were seeing with, I feel like, the internet at large of the homogenization where it's just, yeah, what's even, it's, it's not, yeah, the same content you're going to see on YouTube, you're going to see in your podcast feed, you're going to see on TikTok, you're going to see on Instagram, you're going to see on X, <laughs> just maybe it's chopped up in different formats, but there's no more, it's going to be posted on Reddit, there's no more like this website for this, that website for that. Right. It might as well your your internet might as well just be one big feed of stuff. Right. <laughs> like you know, there's not individual places anymore, which I hate. And it's also too like you know I get a, like I usually stick to like four main things. Usually every day I'm on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok. These are the only four websites that exist. Right. And Reddit. <laughs> <laughs> and even yeah. Reddit now, it's like it's rare that I go to Reddit. I'll go to like a, um, a a private website rather than I go to Reddit anymore because Reddit is just just like everything else. Every fourth post is an ad. Every <laughs> but yeah, but there aren't any. There's no private websites anymore. No. Where can you? It used to be if you wanted to find info about a video game, you could go to you know you could go to StreetFighterFan.net, right. And you'd, and you'd find all the Street Fighter fans. But now they're all just on the Street Fighter subreddit. That's well, that's a big thing, are. too, because like you and I love movies and TV shows. There used to be like, oh, if I want to talk about X-Files, let me go to xfiles.net, and there's going to be a forum where all the mega X-Files fans are. They're, they're... And there's going to be seven of those, too. Right. There's going to be like, oh, links to all the other X-Files fan sites. Right. And it's like it's, a, it's an actual community like... where somebody yeah. like Reddit Said like, oh yeah, we're we're a community. No, you just you took all the communities and you squished them. Where it's like anyway. it's kind of what I, I feel like the big platforms did when they came in with with podcasts, because podcasting was a niche community of like minded nerds that all came in, and then you know the big companies like Sirius and 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 other things bought them, did whatever, and then now they're like, okay, you can go back on your own now. Yeah. So what's the future of podcasts? I don't know. I guess I guess we're probably I don't maybe we already are seeing a lot of numbers drop off as in numbers of podcasts, but I don't know if that's true. It might that, still be growing. That might be a good thing because like 
literally well, yeah, like not point. only did every we shouldn't be doing this <laughs> well but we're the people that should be doing this the people who like can't uh... get a radio deal can't get a tv deal see that's why like I, I was talking to somebody the other day where i'm like youtube was never designed to be a tv network and you can see all these big youtubers who poured millions of dollars hired staff and whatever their content from when they were working in their bedrooms to now where they have a tv studio are it's just drastically night and day of just like great content to shit because now they have to worry about like, Oh, I need to make sure I get this ad read in to get paid. YouTube was never designed to be a network just like podcast podcasts weren't ever designed to be a radio or television replacement necessarily. Yeah. That's why you, the Patreon is like, you're just kind of Frankensteining on these different I, I got to find a way to make this make sense. It is a it is a strange, strange business. And even with quotes. the ads, too, like a lot of like seeing really big, like I forgot, I was listening to something and like one of the podcasts was like, oh, this podcast is sponsored by Walmart. I'm like, no, no, no. Podcast used to be sponsored by like <laughs> Jinx.com or like Woot, like, like stuff like that. When it's like, I think they still are most. I don't think there's too many Walmart podcasts. Like that's got that's Joe Rogan maybe. Well, that yeah. <laughs> I don't know about uh, you know your average like Doughboys isn't going to be. I don't know what Smartless is sponsored by. The three of them, they just put in the money, or like um, like people are doing podcasts like uh, Strike Force Five. Like that was a cool idea because it brought people together who really can't work together on their networks. Uh, Strike Force Five was the podcast during the writers and actors strike where all four, five, five um, nighttime talk show hosts came together and worked privately together to make money for their writers and directors staff. And, you know, it wasn't a place where they can, they could never go on NBC altogether because their contracts wouldn't allow it. But a podcast is the independent place where you can go and get that kind of stuff done and, and listen to it and have fun with it. Yeah. And that's what we're going to do today is continue to have so much fun mm -hmm. with our podcast after all this uh, doom and gloom. I have a good, does, <laughs> we're um, still trucking. Does Taylor Swift have a podcast? Wow, that's a great question. What an interesting question that you brought up. Uh, she does. She does. It's called, it's called Keeping It Swift. And every week she <laughs> talks about music. Is it sponsored by the, 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 the mop? Is that funny? The mop company? Sponsored by the Swifter. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that works. Good for her. That works, yep. sure. No, but uh, in fact, we do have a case today that we're going to get into that's that's uh, s a sort of related to that question that you just asked, so it makes for a, a decent segue. But mops? I feel like it's we're moving on so quick, but uh, from the uh, all I can think about is how our industry is doomed. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wouldn't fine. really necessarily say it's doomed. It's just I wouldn't necessarily say it's our industry. <laughs> <laughs> We're just in it. It's just it's just the big names are going away from it, which I kind of enjoy. Or the small names are going away from it. I feel like that's the other. Mm. I feel like that's what's going to happen. Is only the big names will be left. Which is same thing know. on YouTube. Yeah, the world we'll see. is we'll see what... doomed. Or another another media will emerge and five years and well that's what I, I always think about that too it's like what is the next thing because like you know back in the AI, day baby. when youtube <laughs> first came out there was like four other video platforms and when tiktok came out there was other things but now just like, there's three that's it so taylor swift doesn't uh, have a podcast oh you were joking she does have relevance to today's case um, which comes to us from the internet what do you think her podcast you can find would a link be. anyway i think it would be keeping it swift <laughs> You can find a link in our episode description for today's case. Our defendant today is Marjorie. Marjorie has a Taylor Swift era's tour situation on her hands. You see, Marjorie's friend Emma had an extra ticket to a Taylor Swift show and offered it to Marjorie, who considered the offer, but ultimately decided she's too busy with school to attend. Soon after, however, Marjorie decided last minute to buy her own ticket for a different Taylor Swift show at the same venue on a different night because that night is less busy for her. Now, Emma is annoyed because she's got to find a buyer for that extra ticket she's got in a short span of time 
And Marjorie's worried that she jeopardized their friendship by not being more upfront about her plans and not going with Emma in the first place and feeling like this is going to cause some issues between the two of them. As dual judges here on Geeks on Trial, it's now our job to determine whether Emma is right to hate, 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 or if Marjorie should tell her to just shake, shake, shake it off. You also, there's a spot in there where you could have added a bad blood reference. That would have been funny. That's the, that was the case name. I know. So it feels redundant to repeat it. You know? It just feels redundant to repeat it. This is a complicated case. There was bad blood. <laughs> There was bad blood between the two of them. Uh, they are not out of the woods yet. I think you need to calm down. I, I they one of both one or both of them definitely need to calm down. Uh, they have now have bad reputations with each other. Uh, if if if, they, if they're not careful, they're going to get sad. There's going to be teardrops on their guitar. <laughs> I am going. To I could do this for leave. the next hour of the show. I'm going to go. <laughs> will... I'm going to go join the office, ladies. They need a, they need a producer now. <laughs> We need to be fearless as judges, and we need to speak now on this subject. We need to be just like Romeo. Even if it takes us till midnight. And Juliet. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so, anyway. No more? You're good? I'm going to try to fill out a little bit more of the specifics of the case. Please. Uh, because that was just the sum up. But if it's important for context, if it needs to be heard... Emma originally had these two tickets and she bought them for her sister. Mm -hmm. And then when it turned out her sister couldn't, one of her sister's friends couldn't go. That's when Marjorie was asked to fill in. Okay. These tickets cost her $300. They were resale tickets. So um, Marjorie would have to, would be paying for the $300 for the ticket. So what she ended up doing was buying a more expensive ticket that was actually closer to the stage, a, a much better seat. She also mentioned that she is afraid of heights a little bit. <laughs> and that maybe that was part of the reason she was hesitant because the seats uh, were like high up. Well, listen, at some of these stadium shows, those stairs are They're high up. <laughs> ridiculous. Like, I don't have an issue with heights. I do there. And a lot of them, like, it depends on what the venue you go to. There's no banisters. <laughs> I always think, people always say, like, oh, are you afraid of heights? I'm like, Everyone's afraid of heights at some point. Right. Usually you know, while like you're the, midway into a fall. That's <laughs> yes. when you're like, oh, boy. Is there anyone in the world who's like on top of a literal building and looking down and isn't a, like, nah, I'm not. It's, I, you, don't, it, you don't have to be like, you know, like a phobia, like irrationally right. cowering in the corner and crying. But there's a part of your lizard brain that's like, I'm going to die. Well, there's some of those freaks who like, you know, like 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 free diving and skydiving and, and and parkour climbing. Those are the weirdos that have no fear. And they're like, they get off on it. They're up there just <laughs> rock hard. I always say uh, a, a skydiver might as well be a Nazi. <laughs> I've heard that. I've heard you say that multiple. It's actually your tattoo. It's I do have a tattoo. I won't say where. Mm -hmm. You'll have to you'll have to look for yourself mm -hmm. later. It'll be part of our Patreon. So have you <laughs> have you gone to this tour? Oh. Yeah, so the Eras Tour. Let's talk about let's talk broadly. I, I have attended the Eras Tour movie theater concert experience. Uh, well, that's not what I asked. <laughs> Did you uh, yeah. were you a good Taylor Swift fan and pay your three hundred dollars to the, the ticket master god and go to this concert? So I didn't. Well, and here's the part of this story that baffles me, and I should have uh, I got to look this up now because this story comes just from a. It's only a few weeks old. Oh. And uh, yeah, because I'm Taylor Swift is currently still on tour. Not in the U.S. though, correct? Not in the U.S. Okay. And that's what I don't know where she was a few weeks ago because it sure sounds like this is a. Like I a read fresh... this as if this person was in the Americas because I'm an America centric. Right. Fella. Right, and I assume every, and it's, I think they said they use dollar signs, but I don't know if that translates. Like, a, like a right yeah, out. they used dollar signs. Right, they used dollar signs, but I don't know. Maybe they were doing that because they know Reddit is more. You um, don't think Reddit's this, smart enough to like it, it translates the dollars? No, no right now, no, it's not. But this also might be something that happened. Uh, the 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 case was submitted a few weeks ago, but this could have happened months ago. When did uh when did the tour end in the U.S.? It's been a little bit. 
that's what I'm trying to figure out because right now, uh, as we're recording this, uh, she's she's going to be in France in a couple of months. Because she was in she, Australia not so long ago, or am I making that up? Yeah, she was in Australia. Does Australia use dollar dues? I think they use dollar dues. <laughs> dollar do. You you throw the money in the uh, air and it comes back to you. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that's what they that's what <laughs> they use <laughs> while they're drinking their fosters, uh, which is Australia yeah, and, and for she, beer. And she was in Tokyo before that, mm. so. Um, it's possible this person was in uh, – maybe they were in Australia. Yeah, Australia uses dollars. But usually things are more expensive there. Like I know a video game in Australia is like $100, and they're like, yeah, yeah, that's Australian dollar dues. Well, it's because <laughs> the spiders will kill you, so you have to make things more expensive. Yeah, she hasn't been in the U.S. since last summer. She's okay, been so like it's been a while. South America. So I have no idea what the fuck's going on with this case. But the uh, part of the reason I bring it up is because – Part of the reason I did not go to the store is because I wish I could get a ticket for three hundred dollars. Right. <laughs> the best resale ticket, and believe me, I looked and I refreshed multiple times. The best resale ticket I could ever find for the Enter Store was somewhere in the range of like twelve hundred dollars. And that's like I wouldn't see like if they brought Elvis Presley back from the dead. <laughs> like they, we, we. <laughs> Saw Elton John on his final tour for $50. Yeah. Like, and I'm not saying that there's anything like, fine, she, she could be worth the money, but not that much. And even $300 well, is pushing it. I saw Taylor Swift's uh, previous tour, it- which was now, because it was pre-pandemic, right. so it was years ago. But that, I, yeah, I, I think I, I, you know, I didn't have great seats, but I paid about 50 bucks. Right. Which Something, something in that range. And I also bought the tickets like... A week or two before. Right. Like, we have, specifically with Taylor Swift, but just in general, the concert industry, it, mostly it's just Ticketmaster's fault. And in the U.S. I don't know about the rest of the world. And, in, and yeah, mostly in the U.S., or at least anywhere, uh, presumably wherever Ticketmaster has their greedy little fingers. Right. It's just such a shit show of, you got to be there. They have all these, like, fan programs where you have to submit things so that you'll have a chance to wait in line right. to be one of the first to get a seat and then scalpers and Ticketmaster raises the prices and it's insane it's insanity so i don't know where the hell this 300 hundred dollar number comes from because right. that that sounds insanely affordable to me for this show. and it's also crazy to me too like whenever these things are at a stadium stadiums hold thousands hundreds of thousands of people and they're selling these yeah. tickets for three hundred dollars minimum. Yeah, like it's insane to me. And like they making their money. And sure, it's she doesn't put on a small show. There's there's monitors. There's massive crews. She's driving from location to location. She's but I don't believe that any person, any artist, is seeing a quarter of that money go into their pocket. Sure. No, it's it's most most of the fault is Ticketmaster and scalpers. Right. And now yeah, what are, what is it? That are raising those prices. Ticketmaster now owns Live Nation which owns the venues and then right. Live Nation does something else. So it's like they are literally a monopoly right now. Yeah, artists have no choice. Uh there, because of the Eras tour there was some hubbub made of people trying to get Congress or whoever right. to do something about this. <laughs> uh, as of now, I don't think they have. Like the only thing I, you I can do is like have somebody, like a group of musicians, go out and buy, you know, a few stadiums and make them their own. Yeah. So I don't know. Yeah, I guess. Or or have the or if the government intervenes. Right. Yeah. Like they would because for anything. So, so I some bands I think will. Of will there's very few, but they will not do Ticketmaster venues right. like on principle, and it's it's almost if if you are a band of any real size or popularity, mm-hmm. you can't do that really right. because they just they own everything. Like they own <laughs> unless you only play like shitty clubs and stuff right. where that have an, that have attendance size of like a hundred people. Right, and at that point, if you're you're playing a venue that small, you need to charge a lot more to make it worth your while to go to this venue. And I'm pretty sure, like, I don't know this for a fact, but I'm pretty sure a lot of the unions go through Ticketmaster. So if you want any kind of good Teamster to work on your show, they're probably getting paid through Ticketmaster. Yeah. So it's um, – and also she says her her more expensive ticket was $385. She just specify USD. Okay. She says USD. Yeah. So this could have been an so, older case. 
I, I, I don't know. I have questions. <laughs> I want to know how the fuck she got these tickets so cheap. Unless it was like Midwest or like somewhere where, but like people were like traveling to go. But okay, so so let's get to the back to the case. Maybe of, it was the movie theater. Maybe it was the, the movie theater version. It was just an AMC. <laughs> Which I'm surprised Ticketmaster don't own a movie theater yet. They'll just give it time. They'll figure it so, out. So this ticket was purchased for Marjorie. No, no, this per this ticket was purchased for by Marjorie for, for no, by Emma. Sorry, by for Emma's friend for Emma's and sister. sister. So Emma was never going to go see this concert. That is my understanding, is that she got it as a gift, two tickets for her sister as a gift. And her sister's friends said, no, thank you, I don't want to go. Or she got sick or something, yeah. Whatever the, the case uh, may be. So then Emma was stuck with this $300... Or she couldn't go to work, I don't know what it this was. This $300 anyway. ticket that she just... Right. It would either. Be, so why didn't Emma just go? I guess she was also busy. Okay. So she yeah, it says she had to work. So she asked her friend, who um, Marjorie, who I'm assuming is a Taylor Swift fan, if she spent this amount of money on this ticket. I would assume. And Marjorie was like, "I'm good, thank you. I have things coming yes, up because I have school, I have work coming up, stuff in my life is going on." Okay, mm -hmm. fine, valid excuse. Also, sure. it's it's a it's a big amount of money to be like, hey, you want to buy this? Like, if it was like a fifty, sixty, whatever dollar ticket, sure. Or like you guys can split the cost or something about that. But when it's three hundred dollars, that's that's a big. It's not just a. It might be cheap for a Taylor Swift concert, but it's still not a like. Let me. I don't have to think about it. Let's do it. Right. That's yeah. yeah. You can buy a TV for three hundred. Like, come on now. So like you know, um, so it, it's weird for me to see as like that that Emma would be upset. In any way, with Margie. Well, Marjorie? let me put you. Let me, you can call her Margie. That's fine. Margin. I mean, let me put you in 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 her shoes. Let's let's Ooh. imagine. Now you're getting into my thing. You bought tickets for your sister. Okay, <laughs> I have one. Sure. And you asked me to go with your sister. This would never happen. <laughs> well, this is also the other uh, thing too. Like, does does Emma's sister actually like Marjorie? Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't know. Do they know if they each have other? A relationship at all? Because they're gonna be no sitting idea. next to each but, other. But, eh. but you know, girls. I do. They they all get along. I don't. You haven't met. You don't know any. None. They're like guys, mm -hmm. but they but they get along. <laughs> do they? Well, they pretend. To. Oh, okay. Uh, but, but like, okay. So you, you I'm right. My sister. You let's go, just yeah. say. How about let's say okay, you're you're Danny. Let's say that. Let's say you're Danny. Okay. Listeners know you're Danny. Mm -hmm. Let's say you bought tickets for Danny to go see. I'm trying to think of what a band is that both I and he would want to go see potentially. Tears. Elton John. Man. Oh, okay. Let's say Elton, Elton John. John as a gift because, but you were busy that day. Right. You had you had some work or something. Right. He, he his friend drops out. He doesn't have anyone to go with. You ask me, right. Jonathan, to go with him, mm -hmm. and then I say, "I can't do it. I can't do it. I'm pretty busy that weekend." And then you find out three days later that I went on a different night and bought my own ticket, and you're still stuck with that extra ticket. How does that make you feel? I would be a little upset, but well, there you go. But there you go. But. <laughs> There's more to that. She bought a better ticket. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She bought a ticket on a night that she can go to the show. Mm -hmm. Her issues mm -hmm. still, you know, prevented her from going. Or else I'm sure she would have bought your ticket. It's cheaper. She knows you. Mm -hmm. You know, she already has wait, something wait, wait, to go to. Now I'm confused. You. Now you're saying it like I'm part of the story. Oh, <laughs> who's, I was who's she? In general. <laughs> you're mixing the, the realities. Right. So, you know... I. I w it would sting. Not going to lie to you. It would be like... Well, oh, I would love it if Sting was playing. Well, you have to go to the, 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 the bowl in Vegas or whatever they call that. The, the dome? The sphere. The sphere. The sphere. Um, which we're going to... I don't think Sting's played it yet. Yeah. You're going to go to the sphere? Yeah, let's go to the sphere. We're going to do our first live that's show. That's expensive. We're going to do our first live show at the sphere. Oh, that sounds really good. So, like, <laughs> you know, it would, like, it would sting. It would be like, oh, this bitch. But... Or bastard. Sorry. 
Okay, thank you. But, you you know, if you talk to her and you had open conversation and she was like, listen, I can't actually go on the Saturday that you want me to go on, but I can go on Sunday. I wouldn't have bad blood with her. I would be Mm. like, okay. You wouldn't hate, hate, hate? I wouldn't hate, hate, hate. It wouldn't be the greatest thing in the world, but I'd get it. Because also, what's stopping you from asking any other people or making a shit ton of money reselling this ticket? Yeah. So so the first thing that I think in this scenario is I think I would be a little annoyed in Emma's shoes. I would feel like, what, you told me you couldn't go, but then you went? Come on. I, I needed your help. But as you said, it's a different night. Now, I do think probably it would have been better. Marjorie says she kind of mentioned this last minute mm. that she did this. And maybe it would have been better if she was if she said, like, oh, I'm really busy that specific day, but I – or maybe she could have even – I guess it's too late to say this to backtrack, but it would have been good if she even lied and said – Oh, I already have a ticket for a different night or something. <laughs> or some someone I'm 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 just thinking of ways for her to lie to go. Well, if you really wanted to lie, just don't tell her you went to the concert. <laughs> just don't tell her. But then it's like, I don't know, is that weird or you you can't post on Instagram and right. you got to like pretend, ah, "I wish I got to see it." That feels well, I mean, awkward. if we're if we're going down the lying platform, sure, you know, but sure. I was thinking an easier lie is just like, "Oh, another friend." happened to a better friend that actually sounds worse yeah, yeah it's worse of another friend uh and i think she went by herself right the the night too it doesn't i don't think she said she went with anyone else she i mean she's saying she's afraid of heights i don't know where am i going with this i'm all over the place uh my point is i don't begrudge emma for sort of being annoyed right 100 percent. like i said i think i would also be annoyed and I think that Marjorie probably could have done a better job uh, communicating about it. But the other thing that you said, which is another part of this mystery, part of this case is is Marjorie saying, oh, now Emma has to – she's only got a few days to get rid of this, this expensive ticket. And what if she can't sell it and she's stuck with the ticket, she spent the money or whatever? I Again, I don't know what right. reality this is where it, you can't – sell a, turn around and sell a Taylor Swift ticket for twice as what you paid for right. it in a second. <laughs> and clearly I'm so confused. Like unless it's an issue of maybe the the sister's younger and she doesn't want her sitting next to a stranger, but she's going to be sitting next to a stranger on one of the four sides. So it's not like that or like she wanted her someone to go with her to be protected mm. with Huh. Maybe, but I feel like that would have came up in the story at any other time. Interesting. Yeah, the age wasn't mentioned. I assume, I think we're assuming these are college students. Right. We know they're in school, but the fact that, um, you know, the fact that Marjorie can, is just like, yeah, I'll last minute buy this and right. go seemingly by myself feels like she must be driving. She has some income, some in supposed disposable cash from somewhere. But yeah, you're, but the, the second, like they are like, they go online to Facebook and they, or whatever Snapchat and they go, Hey, I have a ticket to the Taylor. They don't even care what Taylor it is. People will be like, <laughs> here's some money. Yeah. I, that, that is the one thing about this case that I'm just so confused about. I'm trying to figure out. I'm also still. Why, where did this take place? It's still because you're right. The more I think about it, she bought tickets days before the concert for ticket price, like the sticker price. Like yeah, three hundred eighty-five dollars, like on impulsively, like on the day, and for like <laughs> or the day. better seats. Yeah. Like that's why I, I kind of I don't want to throw, like say that some of the story is made up. But, like, unless you're, like, literally in, like, Nebraska. <laughs> um, okay, I'm seeing a mention elsewhere in here. Uh, the uh, Marjorie does at some point mention something about local currency. Okay. I don't know, but she says USD in the original po- post, so it's like she's... It's she's either translate even if she's you know translating that for Americans' right. benefit, it still should be the equivalent. But maybe in Aust- let's just say maybe it's Australia. Maybe in Australia it just wasn't there. Just aren't as many Taylor Swift fans. I, but I, I feel don't like know. then if there's not as many Taylor Swift fans, they're not going to do as many shows because they can kind of guesstimate whatever they have and and it would still yeah. sell out 
at some, but still, somebody's going to buy that ticket for either, either you're going to. What's going on in Australia? Either you're going to make profit on this, or you're going to, you know, lose a little bit of money. But you're not going to have an issue filling that seat. So it's like I don't know if I like. It's a weird thing because you're right; it would sting a little. Like if you're like, if you know, you went without Every Danny. Every breath you take. Huh, 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 huh. Just sting a little. I'm looking this up, by the way. I, I, I had a feeling. Um, so yeah, so I don't know. Like if, if did we just assume it was Australia? Us? Well, I don't. I'm assuming it's Australia. We don't know for a fact, but I found an article. Uh, it sounds like Australia has better laws about. How okay. much tickets can be resold for? Unlike t- us with Ticketmaster, where we're screwed all the time, right. they have. Um, I pr- yes, tickets are cheaper in Australia, but still, then than they are here. Even if they are cheaper, she could probably still get her money back. She could probably go still to fucking Australia. S- well, but you'll get stung by a spider, and, and a koala will give you. A- I killed by a stingray, perhaps right. again with Too sting. Soon? Oh, I get it. I'm not going to tell anybody else. Roxanne. So. I am going to sting you. <laughs> Roxanne, do you want to buy this ticket? Um, so I'm sure if she were to shop, if she were to go somewhere and be like, like, do you want to buy this ticket? I understand it's annoying. It is annoying because you offered this person a ticket. Now, I would be more so upset if they offered this ticket at discount. If she's like, hey, I have this extra ticket. I'll split it with you. For you to go with my sister, maybe keep an eye on her, maybe, you know, just go with her, drive her, do whatever. I don't know how cars work in Australia. They might even have cars. They might not have gotten them yet. You know, um, so, so like maybe like, okay, or I'll, you know, give me $200. I'll, I'll eat the hundred and then you go have fun with my sister. That sounds wrong. <laughs> I'd love to get that offer. The uh, gross, the. The money does complicate it a little bit. You're saying you think it would be worse if yeah, she like, had offered to reduce the cost? Right. Like if she was like, hey, you know, I nobody got took this ticket. Give me $200 and go with my sister on this night. And then if she was like, no, I'll get my own ticket. And that's kind of like a slap in the face. But she got her own ticket. She had circumstances that she still couldn't go the night of this ticket or the night of this concert. Maybe she should have, maybe um, Marjorie should have contacted Emma and be like, hey, I'm thinking about going on Sunday, not Saturday. See if you could transfer your tickets. Yeah. There should have been, there should have been some communication on both Mm -hmm. sides instead of just, hey, I went to this show. Sorry. Yeah. It sounds like we're, I think it sounds like we're ready for verdict. It sounds like you're closing in on it. Yes, but I want you to go first. Oh, you do want me to go I first. I want you to go first because, like, I, it could be both. It could be either or for me because, like, it, it's, hmm. yeah. Interesting. Because I'm, I'm getting a vibe from you. I'm leaning towards well, one side. <laughs> but so, yeah, but I, you're, you're a smooth talker. You can sway me over. I'm a smooth talker. I agree with you, and this is true for most of our cases, honestly. Thank you. Ninety uh, percent okay, of the time, it, not. I didn't mean that. Ninety oh, percent um. of the time, it just comes down to communication issues. Right. That's so much of the problems in these types of things is just just talk to the person about it. Just use your little mouth flaps and flaps. Don't. And can you not say that? Juju bees in their eyes. Um. <laughs> we we know. have texting now. We don't need to flap our mouths. Well, I do voice to text. <laughs> oh, okay, Grandpa. I don't actually do voice to text. I just rec- I record a voice message. <laughs> you a voice and memo send and send it. <laughs> yeah. Uh. So, uh, so it would be Marjorie could have handled this a little better, but I understand. You know, life's busy. She's doing stuff with school. Whatever. It's it it is what it is, and. I think the fact that e- even in the Australian economy, it shouldn't, it really shouldn't be too hard to get rid of this ticket. I don't think. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I don't understand Australia. But I got to imagine it's not that hard to get rid of this ticket. And it's also something that it's not as if Emma went in on this with Marjorie from the beginning. Right. 
Like she said, hey, Marjorie, let's go together and get tickets. And then Emma was like, yeah, okay, nah, never mind. I changed my mind. Right. This was something she offered to her. You know, Marjorie's under no obligation to accept. That said, I understand it's like a little annoying. Hey, you said you couldn't go, and then you did go later. Mildly annoying, but I don't think it's so egregious. I think the act itself was fine. There could have been a better way of handling it or addressing it. But overall, it's it's a fine thing to do. All the circumstances justified, in my opinion. I don't think Marjorie is guilty. I think she's not guilty. Uh, you know, I have to agree 100% with you because, you, have to. you know, I, I'm, I'm obligated by law. I signed a contract a few years ago when we started this podcast. So I have to agree with you. No, but I have to agree with you because Marjorie didn't really – she told her the reasons why it wasn't even like, Oh, sorry, I can't do it. Or if it was like a flaky thing, like, eh, maybe I'll get back to you. Like it was nothing like that. It was literally, I can't go this night. I have things that are due. I have things that I have to do. I don't like heights. I might fall. I might break, break a neck. I don't know. Something you might, you might die. She might have high. I might break one of my necks. One of my necks. So, you know, I, I definitely don't think Margie is guilty of anything. And, and, and it's, it's kind of, you know, did, did Emma not, Emma not give her any, um, give any other options. She didn't like open this up to other people, you know, like, you know, this is, this is still astounding to me, Australia or wherever, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> this is a big ticket. This is a big show. This is a big thing. It's not like it's an older band. It's not like it's whatever. This is a big name concert. You can find someone to buy this ticket. You can probably, if 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 Marjorie was able to get a ticket the day of or the day before, I'm sure Emma can get another ticket to go with the sister. You know, cash in two tickets, price of one, whatever. And 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 they're, they're she's not guilty. Not guilty. Well said, well said. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, you know, there's some complexities in the case, but ultimately it's it boils down to just, I couldn't go that night. I want a different night. Right. Like, I, <laughs> like, and like we were saying, if, if in That's my situation, it. if Danny, whatever, it would have, it stings a little bit, but also like, right. I feel like we would have communicated. Yeah. You would have been like, hey, I can't go this night. Sorry. Or we would, you and I would be like, you know, hey, Danny, why don't you go with Jonathan? on the Sunday instead of the Saturday, and we could see if we could switch tickets around. Because it seems like the the tickets were just willy-nilly all around. I have to assume that this was the only night that uh, Emma's sister could go or something. Because otherwise, I would think, wouldn't you just choose a night when both you could go with her? Right. Instead of a night when you couldn't and she needed to have a friend go or something? Well, it also sounds like, too, like Marjorie sounds like a fan as well as Emma and, and anybody else. It just sounds like... Wh- maybe Emma maybe isn't a fan. Okay. I, I, I have to assume. Because if she was a fan, wouldn't she want to go with right. her sister? Maybe her sister's the big fan, and that's why. But like also, but wouldn't, if, a fan. if you know, if you're offering this ticket to a friend's secondary, wouldn't you be like, hey, we're getting tickets. Do you want to go with them as well? Like, include people in the beginning? Because I would also kind of be bitter with that as well. Mm. You know, like... Yeah, in a maybe. Sense. I, guess, I mean... I guess if you're like again, if you're just if you're close with your sister right. and you want to surprise her for a gift, maybe uh, maybe Emma and Marge, Emma and Marjorie aren't even that close. Right. So I don't even right. know how good of. I mean, I go to concerts with your sister all the time. <laughs> it's not like she was offering her this ticket. Right. It was like, it was do you like, want to buy it? You have to pay for it. Right. Yeah. Would you like to buy it? I give you first, as if like she probably could buy it from someone else or something. And also, we don't know if this ticket. It could have been a shit seat. We don't know. Well, it was a. It wasn't a great seat for sure. Right. There's no, there's really no bad seat at a at a Swift concert because it's a stadium show. She does three sixties all over the moves around. There's big displays, giant screens. It's about the sound experience. Well, you know what else? Australia could have different. That's true. These, I think most Australian shows are done around a billabong, right? And, and uh, you're uh, there's giant spiders in the crowd. And don't forget <laughs> that the the show goes the opposite way that a show does in the U S. <laughs> Yeah, they. She, she sings all the songs in reverse. Right, she sings them backwards while spinning. And, yeah, you know, I wonder yeah. if the Exorcist did the Exorcist head move the different way. It does. it does, huh? Yeah. Wow. If you watch the Australian edit, if you ever get like an import right. DVD of the Exorcist, it goes the other well, way. Well, DVDs too. DVDs have to spin the opposite direction. Yep. Wow. Yep. That's yeah. messed up, huh? Yeah. Yeah, and in Australia, straight marriage is banned. Good. 
Now it's just uh, Soviet Russia jokes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. Let's keep it spinning. Let's just keep it to spinning. spinning. We need to punish Emma for her crimes and now, in this case, as the decided guilty party. Right. For uh, maybe not even being mad, by the way, a lot of this might all be in Marjorie's own head. Right. <laughs> but we're just going to assume she's mad and we're going to punish her. <laughs> Why well, assume this entire case was two texts? Hey, want to go? No, thanks. Okay. <laughs> night. It does. I mean, uh, you know, at the risk of being labeled as a sexist, <laughs> this does. This does. The story does read to me like my sister in high school right. telling me a story and talking uh, you know, a mile a second, uh, and 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 ultimately, it's like. So the story was: you went out and bought a drink, and your friend bought one too. Like, <laughs> like you could have just said that. Like, oh my god, she got time. us these tickets. I couldn't go to the show. It's like, sh- shut up. Sh- it shut sounds up. like girl drama, right? <laughs> you know, <laughs> but it's fine. Or we're all about right. girl or, drama. Or guy drama. Come on now. Yeah, I like girl dinner. <laughs> Doesn't matter. It's an old, it's a, it's a, it was an old TikTok Uh, meme. I know. It's over now. It is. (laughs) By old, I mean more than two days ago. Like last week, yeah. Yeah, which, so it's now completely obsolete. We need to punish Emma Mm -hmm. is my point. Mm -hmm. I I feel like we got to make her go see a show that sucks and pay a top dollar for the best seats in the house. Well, she has to go see a Taylor Swift show, but sit front seat. She's, no, no, no. She has to go work. A Taylor Swift show. No, no, she has to go to an American Taylor Swift show and pay those ticket prices. Right. <laughs> uh, she has to. No, who's a who else? An Australian band. Yeah, um, Toto. Mm. No, they're African. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Russell Crowe's band uh, yep. that he um, had. Flight of the Concords. Gotta... No, they're <laughs> well, they're New Zealand, but sh- sure, yeah. that's close, close enough. <laughs> Does, did Australia trying, get music yet? I don't know if Australia has music yet. It's hard because, as you said, like men the in hats spin the other way. Men in hats. I which, come from a land down under. I come. Wait, is that? Are they actually Australian? probably not? <laughs> she's got to go. She's got to go see a live theatrical version of Kangaroo Jack, uh, performed with a Kangaroo Jack puppet, the Broadway stage show. Okay. Are you looking up Australian yep. bands? Can you please tell me some? They're Canadian. <laughs> okay, but but what are there any Australian bands? I just want to know, for the record, has Australia produced music or no? Mm, in excess? Okay. Okay. ACDC? That can't be true. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe they are. Maybe some of the members. I don't know. Now I see Men at Work is in here. Men at work. That's yes. different from men, men in hats. hats. You're right. Is men in work? Two different. Land down under? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know who sings these things. <laughs> I don't know. Yes. No. That was that band. Okay. Down under. Men and they're Australian. They are Australian. Australian. Okay. All right. We settled it. That's what she's got to go Good. see. I think mm-hmm. she's got to pay top dollar, stay the whole show. She's got to sing along to every song. She has to learn the words to every song. Some of these bands sound awful. The fact that that song comes from Australia makes it so much more offensive right. because it, it's like if it's an American singing it, it's like that's funny because we don't know what we're talking about. But as an Australian, they should just be embarrassed. Well, I just assumed it was like some um, like some party song from the U.S. Just some guys saying, yeah. you know. Yeah, it come from a, like Walk Like an Egyptian. Right. It wasn't sung by Egyptians. What? <laughs> I hate to bring it to you. The, the Buggles, <laughs> they're not Egyptians. What? <laughs> wow. Go away. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyway. <laughs> anyway. You don't have your Chick-fil-A Any, sauce? Is that, a, um, is, that, is that good enough? That's good enough. Yeah, that's fine. Or good. she has to pay for the ticket for margarine. Oh, yeah. She should have to pay. Yeah. She should have to pay. Yeah. So, Give her the 385 bucks. Right. Sorry. Yep. Plus tax, which in Australia is uh, probably included in the <laughs> price. <laughs> Yeah, they probably give you a, a, a baby kangaroo and a hand job on the way out. <laughs> From Taylor Swift. She's busy that night. <laughs> well, that's Australian hospitality for you. <laughs> oh, yep. Okay. If you have an opinion about this case, a verdict that you think should have been rendered instead of ours, or if you could shed some light on the ticket situation in Australia or some other continent. Mm-hmm. Let us know. Email us, geeksontrial at gmail.com. That's the same place you can go to submit your own case. 
it could be all kinds of different types of geekdom. You see, it could be about uh, music fans. It could be about video games, movies, board games, comic books, anything like that. Broadway shows. If fandom of any sort. You send it in to us. We'll settle it for you on the show. We've got a link. You can fill out a form that's very easy to fill out if that's easier for you. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> oh, sorry. Ow. Sorry. What else could they do? Well, you can help us support the show by heading over to our Patreon. That's patreon.com slash geeks on trial. Only $5 a month. That's all we're asking. And you get access to our episodes early, both audio and video. And you gain access to our second show, our behind the paywall show. That's geeks on trial sidebar, where we talk about random stuff. And that episode comes out twice a month. And, oh, he's your please head on over to the Patreon. He needs medical help. Yep, I need that medical help, folks. You got to go check it out. Five bucks a month is real good and easy. We will we'll, we let us know you to support the show. Tell your friends, tell your friends, tell your friends, tell your friends, and family. Now, where, where after you're done having your stroke, where can people find you on the old internet? You can follow me, uh, Jonathan Estes, on Blue Sky, JonathanEstes.com. Uh, also, this this week, this past weekend, I went into the Nintendo store in New York City for the special Princess Peach Showtime launch Ooh, event. Look at you for the new Princess Peach game on the Nintendo Switch. Uh, and there's, I did a little write up with some photos over on GoNintendo.com. So if you want to learn about that, you can go check it out over there under the, under my handle Quince. Pretty wow. exciting stuff. Princess Peach. She's peachy, man. It's true. You more of a peach guy or a daisy guy? I, I like plums. Plumbers? Plumber, this is see, this is where you asked me what our, we could find me on the internet. I, I wanted to talk to you about my stuff first. Yeah. I want to talk about Prin Princess Peach. Well, what, uh, have you, I'm assuming you played the Princess Peach game. I played the demo. There's a free demo on the Switch. Everybody can go try it. Do you like it? Yeah, it's cute. It's like a, it's like a little, it's like a little platformer for friends and family. <laughs> How about but you? Not for, but not for you. you, not for you. It's for friends <laughs> for and family. For friends and family. You can find me over on youtubecom slash the snack guy where this week, my episode that's coming out today, today, as we record this, I don't know when you're watching this show, but I talk about the Wick, Wick Donald's sauce, which is the, the new anime themed sauce coming from McDonald's. Wicky, wicky. It is, yep. It is a spicy chili sauce and that's, that's, that's basically all it is. And I eat it on some nuggets. So it's youtube.com like slash the snack guy. Don't want to step on your URL. That's fine. I haven't tried I haven't tried the sauce, but I feel like I would like it. It sounded good. It's to not me. bad. Do you like uh do you like the, the spicy chili sauce at like an Asian restaurant and, and, and stuff like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure, sure, sure. It's sure. that stuff. I thought it was like a sweet and sour. Is it like a sweet and sour or no? no it's it's not, just it's no. basically like a it, the best way I can describe it, which I do on the show, is like it's like a barbecue wow. base with a chili. And like some kind of like orangey, fruity kind of flavor to it. Yeah. Oh yeah, that sounds good. That yeah. sounds good. That sounds good. That it's sounds good. it's a it's an Asian sauce that's been McDonald's fied. Well, sounds good. Remember the BTS sauce? Do you have the BTS sauce? No, I didn't. I never went to because like every thing they just had like a sauce or like something that was like oh this is what they have on the market already. They just relabeled it as something else. The BTS one was different. They had a Korean sauce. That one was different. Oh. So you missed out. You messed up. You got to go to Korea now to do that review. <laughs> Which one? Well, thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, it's been a blast. Again, check us out on all platforms. If you're on YouTube, listen to our audio. If you're on an audio podcast, we're on YouTube. If you want to see our faces, you can check all that stuff out. We thank you so much for entertaining our show and for us for entertaining you. Till next time, I'm Jonathan Estes. Oh, boy, I'm Ivan Hahn, and now this case good. is closed. See you next oh. time. <laughs>